Hi everyone, it's The Music Reel. My name's Nicola Burton, I'm from Music Means Business. I have the Pushy team with me, Mark, Michael and Manny. And our very special guest today is a man from the Darwin Turf Club. So the CEO from the Darwin Turf Club. We've got Mr. Brad Morgan. Brad, it's very nice to see you today. Thanks, Nikki. Nice to see you guys as well. Well, you are, I guess you're up in the Northern Territory. It's quite a different situation to how it is in Queensland. So I guess we'd like to hear from you what it was like in when you first had to close the doors and go into lockdown in March. What was that like for you guys? Yeah, look, it was a bit of a shock, the same it was to everybody. We didn't see it coming. Um, uh, and we coped with it like everyone else did, I guess, to our very best ability. Now, we're a little bit different here at the Darwin Turf Club. We've got a lot of things happening in, this, in, the, in the way of entertainment. Um, our major um, event, I suppose, is the horse racing component, and we're relatively lucky that horse racing in Australia was able to continue during these times. Mm-hmm. So we had regular events or weekly events uh, that were held quite eerily with no crowd. Um, so the horse racing continued behind closed doors. We couldn't offer any hospitality to our guests or sponsors or owners of the race uh, of the horses. Um, so effectively, we just had jockeys and horses, the stewards, um, huh. at a race day. So it was quite quite eerie, and we still needed to maintain all of our social distancing and uh, all of our other um, hygiene practices during that time to ensure horse racing could continue. So it was quite, again, different to see jockeys and trainers keeping 1.5 metres after an event where they may have won tens of thousands of dollars. There's no slapping on backs or handshakes. It's um, it's quite, quite different. Um, And Darwin Turf Club, as you know, just a bit of background, we we hold a uh, annual event here, the the, um, Darwin Cup Carnival, where we would get crowds over that period of over um, 150 to 200,000 people over that period, wow. culminating in the, the Cup Carnival itself, where we have different forms of entertainment, typically interstate or international acts. Um, our Gala Ball, we have an outdoor black tie event where we've had numbers up to 4,000, um, and we, wow. we have entertainment wrapped around that. So that is all up in the air in itself. So it's been interesting times as I'm sure it has been for everybody else in Queensland. Well, you haven't had as many cases as we have, had you? You've you've been relatively... We're we're relatively lucky. As soon as the Chief Minister made the decision to close the borders, um, that effectively stopped any transmission or any any cases, positive cases at all. Any any positive case in Northern Territory was from an interstate or international traveller. Yeah. So on June 5, we will be able to uh, reopen our doors, clubs, pubs and nightclubs. Um, and we're just getting some interpretation around now around what we can do and what, how we can operate. It appears that we'll still need to enforce the, the social distancing. Um, we have a major, we have a uh, supercar event the week after our major event. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the different yeah. bodies carry out these major events with social distancing and mm-hmm. practice. Absolutely. Wow. Manny, I'm sure you've got some questions for oh, Brad. I've probably got 101 questions, Brad. Um, you had an illustrious, like, I guess, career in managing some of the most salient pubs and casinos in Australia. You find your way, like, in Darwin and obviously, like, in a surreal situation. I guess the my my curiosity more so is that I guess the Northern Territory has been a bit more progressive than what the Southern states are like in terms of lockdowns. So obviously you're opening up probably a little bit earlier than what we're opening up here, like in the Southern states. But how do you foresee events happening in the future? You know, you know whether it's the ball or, or like or whether the, you're utilising live entertainment like in your venues, can you foresee that there will still be social distancing? I mean, obviously, our, all our hygiene practices have to be, you know, like unilateral throughout Australia. But like in terms of you've got some large capacities there, 
So I guess you're going to see some limits on the numbers of people coming into, you know, into horse racing, being, you know, um, like entertained. How do you foresee that's going to look like post-COVID? Because there'll be huge areas and, well, like, I guess, limited numbers. And how does that impact? It will be. Yeah, there's, there's all sorts of things to take into consideration, Many, I think, when we come out of this, um, I think the economic position of most people will dictate what their spending habits will be. I, I think, well, as you'd, you'd be aware, the employment rate throughout Australia is not far away from double digits. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the, um, the leisure spend of people will, be, will come under scrutiny. Um, so I think we'll start to see some limited numbers until people start to recover financially from what they've gone through. Um, we're relatively lucky in the Northern Territory is that as the Territory lifestyle is, we, have, we do have a lot of outdoor activities. Mm. That said, we have a limited time of the year to enact upon them, which is our dry season, which is where we are at the moment. Wow. So our dry season typically starts April, May and goes through till September. And then we start to get into that terrible build-up period. Yeah. where it's humid and, and anyway, there's likely to be more rain. So while we, we did have a little bit of rain this morning, actually, which is unique, over that period of time, all these outdoor events happen. Um, so we, we need to compete with a lot, of, a lot of outdoor events and people pack these events in over that short period of time. And, and typically they are outdoors. So in listening to the health experts, we seem to have greater capacity to hold an outdoor event than we do indoors so hence the increased numbers outdoors and we can enforce that, that 1.5 meter social distancing um but it'll be, it'll be difficult because i think human nature is it's difficult um, because you go out to, to change. yeah you go out to Sorry. connect with people so it's really hard when you're having a good time and you're having a few drinks correct to maintain yeah. that distance so yeah yeah it's, and it's even in hard. sporting events that's a difficult thing you, you only got to watch the NRL or the AFL and the supporters, um, you know, they love a good hug and a shoulder yeah. slap. That's not happening. So to change those habits is going to be very difficult. Uh, oh. So, yeah, we're going to change our, the way we, we conduct ourselves and personal hygiene. and um, okay. It's going to be really interesting over the next 12 months to see how we can do that um, and still That's maintain cool. these high level of standards that the health experts are asked us to, to adhere to. Um, we just got news today that in the gaming industry in the Northern Territory, um, they will allow um, casinos to operate as long as there's a screen put between each machine. Wow. <laughs> wow. Transfer into what a cost. What More a cost. cost. You know, there is a cost to the business. A lot of the operators here are saying they're questioning whether they'll even open on June the 5th. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly the larger ones, um, just to turn the lights on and the air conditioning um, and the operational cost is significant, uh, particularly indoor events when they have to maintain at 1.5 metres, they're not confident they can get the, the, um, the maximum revenue in to generate those operational costs. So there's um, some hard decisions being made right now, I would suggest. It's really hard to imagine because these businesses have suffered such incredible losses and moving forward, it's not going to be as simple as just opening the doors. There's so much more. Right. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Just when you yeah, there's a lot of things it. to consider um, moving forward, how we can, if we can do business, um, the tourism industry, Northern Territory is reliant on the tourism industry as is Queensland. Uh, yeah. As you guys are aware. Um, so, you know, until the international borders are open, we are going to struggle. Um, yeah. Interstate borders, similarly. So we, we rely, for example, we will hold a ball this year. We just don't know what our numbers will be. But who, who's going to be the entertainment? Where are we going to get them from? Um, are they going to be local? Because uh, typically we would get, we would rely on interstate entertainment to, to um, to maintain a, you know a level of entertainment, I guess that's that's come to be expected of the of the ball. 
Absolutely. So it looks like, I, I guess, really from a, a price standpoint, it would have to be really local because for you to actually, you know. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, borders it, 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 yeah, borders are closed. People have to isolate if they come to the territory. Um, you know, the, the, the Darwin Gala Ball, ticket price is $425 a head. Wow. Um, years gone past. So clearly this year we're considering what, shape that'll take what we can charge it's going to be dependent upon a lot of a it's lot going to be things. very different mark um brad i suppose um my question would come from you know the average punter side of things like moving forward now that the doors are slowly opening again and you know we're getting to back to some semblance of normality um what can the average punter do to, to help out the venues and, and get them back on the right track yeah yeah, that's that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, mm. We rely on people to comply, be complicit, and um, just in my own experiences, from seeing people, you know, families in, in outdoor events, um, we still got large gatherings happening. Um, to ask a, a punter at a nightclub to stay 1.5 metres away from people is, is going to be exceptionally difficult. I, I think at the end of the day, we have to be seen to be trying. If a yeah. venue can put in the, the measures, uh, the, the increased hygiene practices, the appropriate signage, as long as venues can be seen to be doing the right thing, and then we, we rely on our patrons mm -hmm. to, to assist. Um, I think that's the most important thing, I guess. It, it's, it's exceptionally difficult to change patron behaviour in a short period of time. It's got, I think it's going to take a period of time yes. to enable, and, and particularly the younger people that we're trying to attract. I think in a lot of ways, this particular pandemic, I think they may be of the view that it doesn't necessarily impact on them. Mm -hmm. um, so they're yeah. a little bit more relaxed when it comes to, um, to, to following these safer practices. Wow, Michael, there's a lot of questions here. Yeah, I got a very important question. Do you have any tips on the horse races coming up? <laughs> yeah, I have, mate. Hang on to your money. <laughs> <laughs> the more you bet, the more you win. <laughs> true that. If you could true. just send me through some names of horses to watch out for, I'd be really great. <laughs> all number three. Yeah. Well, the first time I went to Darwin was in May. And I tell you what, it was the most spectacular place I've ever been in May. It's just beautiful. And then I was there last year yeah. in early, just early November. And my goodness, what a difference. You know, it's so incredibly yeah. hot and everything's just sweating. So really your time, like you said, is April to September. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing, I guess, moving forward is to get people, you know, once the borders open, get up there and, you know, go and explore the most amazing venues in, mm. in Australia, you know, up in Northern Territory wow. and Darwin. It's just beautiful. So we wish you all the very best with everything, Brad. I know it's a slow road, but, you know, you've had the experience to be able to crack this and to make it work. So we're looking forward to when Manny and I can actually get up there and come and visit mm. you. Um, hopefully. Yeah, It'll probably be, I, I reckon, by the time it's open, it'll be December and we'll be sweating everywhere, but that's fine. Stay away. Stay away in December. But anyway, yeah. look, there's plenty to do in the Territory, as you said, all, all year round. It's, it's a unique you. place. I call it Last Frontier. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's uh, certainly a different environment, but oh, yeah. um, one that if people haven't done yet, I'd certainly encourage them to get up there and have a look. I'm hoping that tourism is actually going to help you guys recover as well too, because it is one place everyone needs to visit now that we won't necessarily be going overseas this is the place to go yep. yeah yeah so Brad, oh that or a cruise one of the two oh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you so much for talking to us brad okay. good luck with everything and we'll talk no, to you. Thank you thanks guys thanks good brad. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, you take